Okay guys, it's a lazy Saturday. I have, this is basically the, the main setup I'm gonna have. I got the three routers here from bottom to top. This is my Comcast ISP. This is where my internet's gonna come in. This is the Verizon I showed you already. It's gonna be the IOT. And this is just another, I think it's a Linksys. I just got it at Best Buy earlier this week. This is gonna be where I put my computers on and tablets. Uh, and phones. This will be the that network, the secure network, hopefully. And uh, so this is basically the setup. This is in my living room. See all the Ethernet cords I have. I'm gonna hard line these three guys together, and then I may hard line them to well the IoT to the PlayStation, the Nintendo Switch, and the TV. Um, I have a mess, a very hot mess right here. Hopefully, I can get that situated. Hopefully I have enough plugs. Um, as you can see, it's probably gonna be. I'm probably gonna spend a lot of time dealing with this mess more than anything. But once I get these all wired up, uh, I'll just go through some of the basics of what I did in uh, in the video here. Just wanted to show you real quick what the setup's looking like. Um, before I get into part two of the IoT seg network segmentation, um, I felt really good about giving away a free book. You know, uh, last week we had a winner for the Tribe of Hackers, and that felt really good. You know, I like spreading knowledge. I like sharing information. Um, so I figured I'm going to do another one. But since this time I didn't exactly have a book uh, particularly in mind, this giveaway is going to be books that are on my website. Um, so basically, if you go to bunnyflocks.com slash resources, I have uh, a column here of books. And there's certification books, tutorials in education and history. I really haven't built up this list. Um, as 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 big as I want to, but I will eventually get to that. But uh, basically, if you uh, if you like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and put in the uh, hash in the comments hashtag free book. Put hashtag free book. Um, I'll do another uh, giveaway for next week, um, and you can tell me whichever book you want on this list here. Um, this kind of limited but I'll tell you what I mean if, if it's not in this list uh, you can go ahead and tell me whatever book as long as it's reasonable price IT security um, cyber security uh, anything within these categories certifications tutorials and history if it's a hacker book or you know related to cyber security IT security and you put in the comments hashtag free book like share subscribe um, I'll do another uh, giveaway next week and just get someone a free book just because I'm in a giving mood right now. Um, I like sharing, I like sharing knowledge, inspiring people, motivating people. So that's the giveaway I'm doing now. So hashtag free book in the comments, like, share, subscribe. Um, so there's that next week. Look out for that. Um, but back to the topic at hand. Uh, so if you checked me out last week, you saw I was planning an IoT home network segmentation. I actually spent all day yesterday, uh, tearing apart the wiring and the plugs and uh, behind my TV, my entertainment system. Um, and I, I basically spent the whole day configuring basically three routers, you know, separating my IoT from my computers and tablets and whatnot. So um, so as of, as of right now, I only did very, very basic. I basically have uh, three networks. I have the, the ISP network, which is not really uh, I'm not utilizing for anything I'm just utilizing for that if you remember that diagram is just uh, connected to those two um, the two other networks the other routers that I have the IOT and the secure network so that's basically the only purpose for that is to uh, receive internet from Comcast and uh, deliver that traffic to those two networks so that's really all that's that's doing and then I have my IOT which has my Philips Hue um, my gaming systems PS4 Nintendo switch and something else Google Home I got a couple of Google Homes and then I have the other network um, which is just strictly computers on tablets and you know things that I do my taxes on so if you've come with me on the screen here if you remember I shared this last week um, so this is basically what I have going on keep in mind this is just part two all I really did was segment everything I have not installed any crazy firewalls um, configured any crazy MAC address filtering or any kind of higher security enabled things as of yet. That's going to be part three when I when I go in and, and 
customize things to more to be more secure to be more uh, hardened um, some things I have down the line that I do want to do is obviously install a, a mo much more uh, complex firewall um, the devices I have the two routers I have they have some firewall stuff but it doesn't look too complex it's kind of like you only can use or configure what they have and it's, the, the interface isn't really isn't really descriptive. Well, it's descriptive, but it's it's not a, like a PFSense firewall, you know, where you can drill down and isolate a, a block or deny or allow uh, specific types of traffic. So I do want to do that down the line. It's probably going to be a part three or a part four. Um, this is only, again, part two. I only have the two networks segmented. Okay, so I'm logged into my IoT network, the Verizon, the Verizon network I showed you last week. And so I, I went into here and I renamed all the devices so I know what everything is, what what's uh, basically connected to my system here. Something I did notice, and I'll show you here, uh, you see this Sony DVD player. So this is like an old Sony DVD player. It still works. It plays Blu-rays. It plays DVDs. And it also has an interface to get you know, Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff. Um, it wasn't named this at first. It was named like uh, Mitsumi something some Mitsumi or something it, it had no kind of indication that it was even my Sony PlayStation uh, Sony player um, so I was confused I didn't know what the hell it was doing what it was I, I you know at first you probably think it's a rogue device or whatever so I did some more research looked found the Mac address um, went through my house and tried to find every every device that I know has an IP or connects to the internet in some way and so I was able to narrow it down uh, to the player here uh, and then I can and then I uh, I turned it off. Well, the funny thing is it was already off. Um, it's one of those that you need to either push the power button on or, or use the remote, turn it on to get Netflix, get Hulu, or, or watch a DVD or Blu-ray. Um, it was off, and you see how these, these here for these other, the PS4 and Nintendo Switch says an active. Um, this, for the Sony DVD player, it said active. But I saw that it was active when it was off. So I, I just, for now, I just blocked it in the, uh, in the firewall rules. Um, is connected to this network, but it's blocked from transmit transmitting anything. Um, if I ever need it, well, I'll put it this way: we rarely use the the Blu-ray or DVD player in the bedroom. If I ever need it, for whatever reason, if we're not watching something in the living room on the PlayStation Four, um, I'll have to remember to unblock it. But I just didn't like how, um, you know, it was active persistently f for no reason. So, my Google Home active, it's on all the time. Philips Hue active. And then some other things are on here. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's good to map your your uh, your network, understand what's going on. Uh, it's just good to have a basic understanding of what's going on in your house. Um, again, for some future things that I do plan on doing, I do want to uh, start maybe install a seam or or you know play with Wireshark just a little bit, just see how the traffic is. I'm really curious about the Google Home. Um, you know what it's doing, what kind of traffic it's it's uh initiating who is reaching out to and what it's doing so that'll probably be a future video for that um and then also i would like to know what kind of ports what kind of port activity is going on there so when i get to you know configuring the complex firewall rules if i can decipher what the google home needs to do its basic functionality you know tell me the weather reach out to the internet whatever um and if there's other gunk junk that's happening I can just block it and make sure I just have Google Home doing what it needs to do. So there's a lot of trust issues with IoT devices at the moment, as there should be, because these you know these companies are just throwing these out there in the market. Their bottom line is to sell and to make money, and security is really a, a, a crazy, ridiculous afterthought. And so and that's the main reason why I decided to segment my IoT from my my computers, and that's why you should too. So. Um, there's that. Let me go, let me jump to my other network. So now I'm on the secure network. Um, this is uh, the router, the new router that I bought. My I got a printer, the desktop that I'm on now, and then an iPad. Um, so this is basically, at, the, at this current time, the only devices I have here. Um, I do have two or three other laptops. I have that one there is already connected here. And uh, when they're turned on, they would activate and you would see them on this if you're logged into the router. Um, and so this is pretty clean. I like I like the clean look. I like 
I like this interface, but again, for this particular Linksys, there's, there doesn't seem to be a lot of functionality for fire for complex firewall rules. Um, let's see if I click around and see if I find something. Yeah, it's pretty much all that uh, that was here. Um, it, to me, it doesn't seem as customizable as PFSense. Obviously, I didn't buy this to be a firewall. I bought it to segment. Um, but that is, again, a, a future video I'm going to do uh, as I get deeper into the weeds, into this network, into this home network segmentation project. Um, it'll be fun to do more uh, research on that and, you know, research firewalls and install that somewhere between, between my routers and, and see what's going on there. Let's see what else I got happening. Oh, some things. I turned off guest networks on everything. Um, so there's no guest network, so don't look for that. Um, well, when I mean don't look for that, I mean... So basically, something out that I had in mind while I was doing this was, if I didn't need it, if I, if I felt like I didn't need it for my network to work, um, I turned it off. So that was guest network, um, something called the Mocha network. Oh, what, that was I wasn't sure what that was. I just turned it off. Um, what else? Uh, there was something. There was a couple things I turned off. For my uh, for the ISP, I turned off uh, DHCP because I just hard coded or uh, static static configured the IP address for those the two routers. Um, so there's oh, and I limited the uh, the IP address range. So there's only three or four very very limited IP address range and um, I Mac enabled or Mac filtered uh, only my computers to connect to to the ISP router um, so there's a few things I did a few extra security things I did nothing crazy nothing complex uh, I'm sure even with the basics here it's not the best and most secure uh, solution but it is something it's, it's way better than what I had last week I just had everything thrown onto the same network you know lord knows what was happening uh there so and i wasn't doing any uh monitoring or logging for myself so that, again that's going to be a part three uh it's going to be a future video i definitely will jump on that and uh, when i do that i'll let you guys know so for rely reliability um all all except for the the google home um the google home devices are wireless and they're using wi-fi to get to the iot network but everything else is using Ethernet, uh, the TV, PlayStation, Nintendo's, Nintendo Switch, and the Philips Hue are all hardlined to that uh, for, for reliability. So those aren't broadcasting and, and doing all types of stuff crazy in, in the air. Um, the Google Home is a little bit harder because uh, they don't even actually have, uh, the Google Homes don't have Ethernet ports. And, uh, so, and they're spread out away from the thing. So couldn't really implement an Ethernet solution on those. Um, but I thought that was cool. So enough talking, let me go show you the setup. Uh, so basically, again, it's done. Three networks, IoT, computers, and then my ISP. So let me show you how that's looking. Don't want to be my messy house. So here we go. They are on, doing their thing. You can see all the the wiring in the back. This was not there yesterday. There's all the Ethernet ports. Lights are going off. Kind of hard to get the camera in there. And then uh, remember that mess that I showed you earlier. So still messy, but it's a little neater. And then I move that guy here. So. I can actually get to that and do things. Every part or every plug is being utilized. I have no more room to add anything else here. And hopefully I won't need to soon. So there it is. So appreciate you guys. Uh, remember, hashtag in the comments, hashtag free book. Um, like, share, subscribe. I will give someone uh, or send someone a free book from that list or any IT cybersecurity book that you want. Um, this is all I have for today. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next week. Thanks.